was just to refresh her memory. Y'all remember that girl? We got to update. We got to update. Fox News Fugitive Files taking a second look at a real-life Grinch who not only assaulted a woman, but stole her baby's Christmas presents. Wow. That's according to police investigators. This is 22-year-old Khadija Johnson. Christmas Eve, MPD says Johnson decided to pay a call on the other girlfriend of the boyfriend that she was also dating. Let's say she wasn't bringing Christmas cheer. <laughs> She kicked in the door. She went into the apartment. She attacked our victim. She then retrieved a knife, and our victim retreated to the restroom with her child for fear of her safety. We are still looking for Khadija. You promised you would come in, and we are going to come get you. Do not turn yourself in. What's going on, guys? You already know I appreciate when you guys take the time to tune in. I am back with another video. Real quick, you know, I got to say this. Go ahead and make sure you hit that like button. You know, I appreciate you guys for tuning in. So make sure you hit that like button. If you're subscribed to the channel, that's great. If you're thinking about subscribing to the channel, that's fine. Also, make sure you go ahead and hit that like button to support the channel. And that way you can get this video out to more people like you. Listen, I don't know why some people do the things they do and don't think there are going to be consequences behind their actions. But you kick down a whole door and do you enter someone's home and attack them? You're going to jail. What's the most expensive thing in Madison? This vacation count? Yeah. And the funny thing is chicks be acting like it doesn't count. See, broads are so goofy, like they love tokens, right? So say you take a chick out on a vacation, she still want the plushie though. You, yeah, you might have spent 10 bams on a vacation, but she want the plushie. And here's the thing, when you ask her and they remember, they don't think of the vacation as a gift because you didn't give her something tangible. So when they're thinking of gifts, they're thinking of the things they can hold in their hand because they want to show other women the mental. It's amazing. Like if you paid for her education, you pay for her to go to college, that doesn't really count. It's not romantic, even though it's expensive. I need to save money. Get that plushie. I ain't getting it, but y'all can save money as a cheat code. Finesse them. Get the plushie. Just don't get the expensive stuff. <laughs> he took me back to his house, not because he wanted to do anything, because he wanted to show me the renovations he's doing in his basement. <laughs> You just go to basements on a first date, Regan. I know, but he had barn doors. <laughs> he had a, he was making a whole other apartment all by himself. <laughs> he bought this house. And he has a car. And it's nice. And his car did you see his car? No. It's 20, it's brand new. It's a 2021 SUV. It's beautiful. <laughs> And some wine. So, do you think you're going to go on a second date? He wants me. He wants to bring me to his hockey game tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to pick me up and bring me to his hockey game, <laughs> so I can come watch him. It's so cute. <laughs> thrifting beforehand so we, yeah so we can pick out outfits for each other and not let each other see and it's what we have to wear on our next date <laughs> that's what he said <laughs> first white guy <laughs> I mean no offense but <laughs> I think I kind of been missing out <laughs> he has a house at 25 years old I'm only 22 and I don't know what I'm doing <laughs> but I think I might want to move in <laughs> It's 
nice. It's cute. I can get used to it. <laughs> so one time I went to this party and some guy came up to me and he was like, hey, can I buy you a drink? And, <laughs> and I was like, I was like, no, thank you. I don't drink. And he was like, so why did you come to a party if you don't even drink? And I was like, no, I came here for, for a little saint. And he was like, who's little saint? I was like, no, no, no. I came to do it for a little saint. I came to battle everybody here. <laughs> what are you trying to do? <laughs> Run as fast as possible. Because that, that doesn't add up. There must be some. Here's a thought. Maybe a beautiful girl doesn't need a man in her life to feel fulfilled. And realistically, nobody really wants any therapy afterwards. I don't really know you. You do seem all right, but I'm, unfortunately, I'm going to have to disagree with you on this one. And I'll reply to your video because you stitched mine. Now, you said that women don't need men, which I have to disagree on. Because I think as much as men need women, women need men. Guys, women that think like this are a very, very big problem to this society. This is why it's so broke. Because I'm never going to understand how you out of everyone is saying, I don't need a man to feel fulfilled. When you went on Love Island, which is literally a day in show where you're looking for love and fulfillment. And you're straight, you're not lesbian. So it was men. Look, look how happy you are. Or was it the brand deals you was looking for? Because if you went there to get Tan Tan, you know, to get a free holiday, Tanisha, then I don't blame you. And then this man, which actually makes a lot of sense in your comments, says you don't need a man, yet went on Love Island and got sent back low. And then you reply, like you wouldn't go on if you were asked, oh wait, you weren't. Like you're better than him. Like you're better than anyone else for going on Love Island. Guys, worship me. You know, I've been in Love Island. Get on your knees now. Oh, man. Sure, but you still went and got left and dumped looking for a man you said you didn't want. Which actually makes a lot of sense. And then you say, bored of you, darling. This guy's absolutely right. Saying you don't need a man, then finding out you went on a dating show to find a man is absolutely wild but this is what some women have become this idea that they think they're bragging or it's flexing or somehow some type of status symbol to be able to flaunt and say oh i don't need a man but the reality is they know they need a man and if we're being honest we need each other we work better that way now can some men can some women go off and just be by themselves and everything work out okay of course but if we're talking about as a whole, we're talking about a community, a city, a state, a country. If you think that being separate and not working together to create families and households and communities will be to the benefit of your society and culture, then you are insane. You could take a direct look at the current climate we're in and you can correlate a lot of the issues we are having in our country to the issues we're having with the family and the household. But women who speak like this typically have been through some type of trauma or issue with men who in the past did them wrong and they stayed and they stayed and they didn't go until it was oh far too late and the trauma had already set in and then based on that experience made an overreaching assumption about how all men are and really it's never all of anything in life it's just all the choices you made led you to that current position you are in life and you don't want to take accountability for it yeah, I gotta make this fast as possible. So yeah, I'm 22. I want to expect the night over this dude house on Monday. Fell asleep. Well, he told me he was like, you might as well get comfortable. I mean, he was playing a game. I was watching a movie. He told me you might as well get comfortable and stay because my neighbors have you blocked in. The, the long story short, it's 3 a.m. My mom is blowing up my phone, blowing up my phone, but I'm asleep. I didn't know she was blowing up my phone, so I heard her knocking on his door at 3 a.m. And he goes and open the door and I answer my phone. I'm like, hello. She like, I'm outside. Why were you not answering your phone? I was worried about you. All this stuff. Everybody's blowing up my phone. Friends, family, all that. My sister texts me like, Tania, wake up. Mama's finna come there and embarrass you wherever you were at. And I just didn't care that she came. I was just like, okay. And then I ended up leaving because that made me mad. And she was like, I was just worried about you. And I was just like, you know what? It's okay. Because I'm happy that you're worried about me. It is what it is. I'm 22 though, but okay, that's a good parent. So that's why y'all grew up how y'all grew up. Because y'all parents don't care about y'all. Good night. That just sounds like a mom who just care. Yeah, she's 22, but... You under her roof, her rules, and she just want to make sure she's okay. You never know nowadays what type of things could end up happening to your children and what type of situation they may get themselves in and, you know, find themselves uh, in what type of predicament. And you sitting there thinking that is, everything is okay and it could be the worst thing that ends up happening and all because you didn't make a call or just double check to find out where they are at. And it sounds like her mother worked with the rule of if you under my roof, 
You're going to go by my rules. And I don't really see nothing wrong with that. Having structure in a home and not letting your kids just do whatever they want, no matter how old they are, if they're going to be under your roof, I think is important. Some parents be all okay with their kids having, you know, their boyfriend and girlfriend spend the night in the same room and all that type of stuff. And I don't know about you, but that just don't make no sense to me. And I won't be letting something like that slide. But everybody likes to parent how they parent. And sounds like her mother was just trying to make sure she look out for her daughter and make sure she's okay. Things our exes did and we stayed. Okay. He threw me into a fence and plywood in front of 50 of my friends and family. <laughs> He got a bubble notification on his phone and then proceeded to scream in my face um, for asking about it and left my house. <laughs> he made plans with some girl to hang out before we started to date. Like, before we started dating, they had plans to hang out. And then we started dating, and he still went through with those plans and had sex with her because he felt bad for canceling. <laughs> we were dating at this point when they were supposed to hang out. Um, <laughs> would send me pictures of him cosplaying. <laughs> On Valentine's Day, he made me order off the kid's menu. Um, and I still paid for it. And I didn't even get a Valentine's Day gift also. So, uh, didn't have a car or a job. So, I paid for everything and drove everywhere. Um, would punch his concrete walls until his knuckles bled and then would send me pictures and be like, this is all your fault. <laughs> Um, cheated on me at West Virginia after I continuously sent him money because he was broke, but he was hooking up with other girls while I was demoing him money, so, yeah. Uh, told me to kill myself, called me <laughs> fat and a whore, and hoped I die a painful death. Didn't wear deodorant because he didn't think he needed it. <laughs> Hi, Jean. Don't know her. Um, DM'd a girl asking for her info the day we started dating. Curled up in a fetal position, butt naked, because I wasn't in the mood to do anything. I mean, this is the thing now. Tell everybody all your business. Tell everybody everything going on in your life. Just to get some more followers. Just to get some more views. This is the thing now. And women have mastered the art of telling everybody all of their business. Because what you end up understanding when you hear women like this talking about their traumas and the situations they went through and all of the heartache and the headache and the stress they endured with the man who just did them so wrong and didn't treat them right and misused them and abused them and mentally, emotionally, all that stuff. What you end up understanding is that is just how low her standards are and how she doesn't have any value for herself. And even more so, how important a good dad is in a daughter's life and understanding actual value and who she is as a woman and what she should be looking for in a man. Fathers, stay in your daughter's lives and teach them the right way. Anyway, guys, as always, questions, comments, thoughts, and your feedback, go ahead and drop them down below. You know, I appreciate when you guys take the time to chime in. Don't forget, you can support this channel by hitting the like and that subscribe button. And as always, until next time.